Hello and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to A8S Tech Talk webinar. In today's session, we will take you through the scripting for Aviva STEM platform topic. My colleague, Monzir Karhani, will be guiding us for the coming 45 minutes, discussing the scripting methods and functions for the objects, graphing, and more. I hope you will get the maximum value of this webinar. So as usual, please feel free to type any question you will have during the webinar in the questions box, and we will answer it at the end of the session. Now I will just leave you in safe hands with my colleague Monzer. Hi Monzer. Hi Nader, how are you today? Uh, how everyone? Hello everyone. Uh, today, as uh, described by Nader, uh, we will talk about the scripting. And um, this topic scripting, I know it makes some anxiety for some of the people, but uh, trust me, the, the scripting, the quick script that we will talk today, it's a very easy and very simple way to, uh, to do our application. So today we'll talk about what is the scripting in system platform. We'll go through the scripting for object graphics and the new feature in 2020, which is uh, scripting for the application OMI. In 2017, this uh, feature didn't exist. We couldn't uh, script in OMI application. Now it's uh, it's released with a, a new feature uh, with that uh, the version 2020. So what is the script that we are using? It's uh, what is the language we are using in in System Platform? Uh, it's Quick Quick Script. So Quick Script is actually a language ma made by Wonderware when they started, and uh, because System Platform is a .NET application, they made it uh, make it with a Quick Script .NET. And uh, it's very simple, very simple uh, uh, language. You all need to understand the concepts of um, uh, algorithm. Any any experience in C, C++ or C Sharp, uh, Java uh, can help you to understand uh, QuickScript.net. For more details about this language, you can find uh, uh, actually two documents, uh, but the one that we'll talk about, quickscript.net for system platform, you can find it in the uh, installation path under uh, Orchestra, Framework, Docs, uh, 1033, uh, scripting.pdf. I will show you where to find those two uh, later on in the demo, uh, demo, because there is another one for InTouch, it's quickscript on quickscript.net. Now, uh, because we are working in system platform, uh, a system platform is basically an, an object-based application. So we, we work more in, in templates, and from templates we made a lot of uh, instance uh, for the runtime. So this is why we need uh, to, uh, to make one script, even if the scripts are applied in the template. So one script must be applicable in all the instances. And this is why we use a dynamic reference, or we call it a relative reference, like me or my container. This is, if uh, you already have an experience in Java, it's like Java, we have me in object-oriented. Uh, we have it here in the uh, system platform me will automatically be uh, be changed with the tag name of the object where me exists. So um, uh, this will give uh, a dynamic reference. We made uh, a, a script in the template and it will be applicable for thousands or more uh, the, uh, in, the, in the runtime. This is regarding me, my container. In case from any object, I want to reach the container of the uh, of that object. For example, I'm, if I'm doing a script in this uh, example in agitator and I want to read something from mixer or even from any uh, any object within this uh, co uh, containment relationship I can do it from anywhere and can reach for example from, from agitator my container which means the mixer dot let's say pump one dot a value and same for area I can reach the area I can reach uh, my engine in case I want to read, for example, the name of the historian in case I have different historians in my uh, my project. So I can go for my engine dot reaching the name of the historian or my platform, even if I want to know uh, the computer name where this object exists or for many, many other reasons. So relative reference is actually a very powerful tool in system platform. The, the syntax of uh, scripts is very basic and very easy. Like any programming language, we have the basic uh, syntax, like if, else uh, functions or loops, uh, like if I have an, an expression, then do. If another expression, so we can use else if, else if, else if, and we finish with else if none of these statements exist, and do not forget, I always do close the loop with an end if. So this is like this example that is showing in here. 
I have for loop and while loop. So for a variable from one to whatever the number 10, do statement over statement over statement. In case I want to broke the loop, I can put exit for. So if uh, inside a loop, if I have an expression, exit for, and then I can broke the loop. For each, in case I want to uh, to to use um, uh, a matrix or uh, or a table, so for for each inside the table, you can do the same like for uh, for loop. Same for the while, while and here for the while, we always recommend do not make a, a closed loop while. Always, um, I'm sorry, an open loop while always close it and always make a statement that ends a loop because the while some could uh, could use some of your resources so be careful when you are using a while loop uh, and this is a normal for any uh, programming language and or any scripting language now we do have different execution type let's take about an object first and the graphic and the omi have a little bit similarity with an object. An object have different uh, execution type based on the life cycle of an object. Let's imagine an object that we are deploying and undeploying it, uh, and then we look at the execution type. Once we right click and deploy an object, a copy of uh, this object will be sent to the memory where this object is supposed to be deployed. Once it's inside the memory, this we call it a startup uh, type. We can st uh, after the startup, we can or on the startup, we can uh, um, uh, trigger a script. After it's inside the memory, uh, it can be turned on and it's ready to be scanned by the app engine. And this is another execution type we call it on scan. On scan is another one. On on scan, we can have uh, a script. Then after on scan, every time on every scan period. Uh, the app engine will scan this object uh, and on every scan period we have different types if i have a data change, change i can i can uh, based on a data change in an attribute i can execute a script periodically and dependent of any data change or any expression i can periodically every one second every five seconds make uh, make a script or execute a script i have on true on false that means once a value or expression is true, make an expression, or while true, while false, that means while it is true or while it is false. Now we'll go in more deep in this uh, two uh, expression or two types. You can execute for a period of time. Um, I want now to undeploy this object, so I have two more execution types. So once I undeploy first, the object will be turned off, so it will be off scan, that means it's still in the memory, but it's not yet uh, we cannot it's not uh, uh, on scan that means the uh, app engine will drop it and will not scan it and this off scan can be can you it, you can turn it off with a script if you want to remove it from the uh, from the traffic you can do it even without a uh, an on deployment so on off scan i can execute a strip like what like once i want to remove this object collect some value and send it to somewhere we can do it on off scan mode and at the end, once I want to delete the object, we call it a shutdown, then I can execute another trigger, uh, another uh, script. So in this is the execution types for uh, graphics and uh, OMI. I do have like data change on scan while, while, uh, while true and while false, but for the life cycle, I just have uh, on showing, uh, on hiding, and while it's showing the graphics. This is the only difference between those. Uh, between the object and the graphics. So regarding the trigger types here, if uh, to understand how the scripts periodically work or the wild or the uh, trigger periods work versus the um, scan period, uh, this is a good, I will uh, show you three different scenarios. And here I want to, uh, to refer to the best practice video that we did before, uh, how to choose the scan period of an app engine. Uh, we talk about scan period of an app engine versus the uh, update time from the uh, from the field from the PLC. Now here I will talk about another factor. Once we I want to how to choose the scan period versus 
uh, the time of uh, the script or how to choose the time of the script versus the scan period. So let's imagine we have a, uh, an object that it's already in the app engine where, where the scan period is 10 seconds. 10 seconds is too much. Uh, so um, every 10 seconds, I'm uh, uh, scanning this object and look at uh, the, uh, the expression to trigger a period. So let's imagine we have this type of uh, expression that I want based on it, on the um, on true or while true, it's, uh, I want to trigger um, a, a, a script. So. Uh, this expression started as false, it's become true, then it will become false, then true. The app engine will only scan on the scan period. So on every edge, it will scan this expression. And it will scan the expression and will trigger even when on true or while true based on what happened before. So on scan zero, I have tr false and then it's become true. So this is why I have while true on this uh, point and it's still true so another while true here then here it's false nothing then i have a true here so it is while true however on true it will have i will have it only here it's still true so it was true and it's still true so it, uh, the on true uh, script will not execute however now it's false here on scan number three then it becomes true on scan number four this is the normal uh, the normal scenario when on true and while true will execute. Remember the while true, the execution uh, period is 500 milliseconds. So I don't have any issue. Now let's uh, have another uh, scenario when I have the following signal for the expression. It's becoming true within the scan period. So what will happen when I have this peak or that peak? Uh, remember, I only check on the edge what's happening so it was false now it's false i will have nothing but it's becoming true here so i have while true it's becoming true here while true it was true and it's still true while true you will tell me yes it is it's becoming false yes so that's that's for sure now on true it will be executed only here not on the rest why because it's not it's yes it is on true here and there but those data are already done, had already dropped. The scan period didn't, the, scan, uh, the app engine didn't even look at them. So this is a lost data. This is why when you, when you make the, um, uh, the app engine bigger, you will lose some data. And this is where we have to look at the other video and look uh, the dilemma, uh, time versus performance, etc. And we have to think about it even with the script in here. Last but not least, the while true when I have a long while and when I choose the while to be every 18 seconds. Remember the scan period is 10 seconds and now here I have 18 seconds. So I don't have an issue with on true. I have on true only here. What about the while true? Now it's, it started here and I've, after 10 seconds, I still have a true, but it's while true every 18 seconds. So it will be dropped. It's not 18 seconds yet until the next scan period. On the next scan period, now it's uh, it's 20 seconds. It's bigger than 10 seconds. So it will happen this way. That is for the while through. Please pay attention on the timing when you are choosing the triggers, uh, the trigger type. Now regarding the script, I can, as I said, I can find it in object. Every object has its tab, its scripting tab. So in the scripting tab, and I will show you what are these uh, this page uh, in the demo in the graphics i have two tab uh, two uh, two scripts i have one uh, for the symbol itself when it show on show on hide or depends on some uh, expression or an animation called action script and i'll show them both and last but not least the scripting tab for omi just a little bit hint about omi the scripting for omi is actually uh, needs some namespace for the application and this is why i have omi or the application attribute namespace like attribution for system when i can reach it's like in in touch we call it uh, tags uh, in in touch i read tags from in touch but in omi i read some namespace i have system namespace uh, a namespace for navigation for security playback and settings and i can refer it with my view app dot 
whatever system dot hours. Is it enough? No, I can generate like in InTouch some tags I can generate it, but here in OMI I can generate my own uh, namespace, and I will show you how. So what are the namespace for system? I have uh, uh, the time for uh, navigation. I can reach the navigation. I can turn on, turn off whatever the the page I'm showing right now some security namespace, playback namespace, and the setting namespace for my application. And as I said, I can generate my own namespace. Let's go directly to the demo and show you uh, some uh, of my of the application. So I, as I said, we have many, uh, for the object we have, we have uh, the script for any type of object. Uh, let's give this scenario when I have an empty, uh, DD Suite link, uh, and the DD Suite link, for your information, once the resource or the, the, the server is disconnected and reconnected again, I have to reconnect the DD Suite link manually, or I have to put a script to reconnect it automatically. So this is what I, uh, why I need to open the uh, DD Suite link. Uh, it's already the PLC is coming from this template, but I want to apply it for all my DD Suite links, so it will be applicable in the PLC. So here the tab is the script. Let me add, uh, from here I can add the, the scripts and any scripts I want. So let's name it connection S, like scripts. So this is the script for the DD Suite link. What What is the execution type? And here, remember, I have startup, on scan, execute, off scan, and shutdown. So I don't need any of uh, these except for the execute, execute part. What is the script in here? So aliases, what is the aliases? Aliases is if I have a reference, a long reference, and I want to make a shortcut for it. Uh, declaration if I want to define in memory, and what is define in memory? This, we will refer it in, as I told you, we go for uh, the documentation. Uh, in 2017, it's Wonderworld documentation. So you will find here application, uh, uh, scripting guide, application server scripting guide, and you have in touch scripting guide. What we are talking here is application server scripting guide, uh, that's quickscript.net. In touch is a little bit different with same language, it's quickscript, but here is quickscript. So this is for declaration. For the basics, it's based on what I'm triggering. Let's imagine this, this scenario. If connection status is disconnected, I want to reconnect. So uh, this is what what I what are the different connection I have connected disconnected and mixed mixed that means some to topics are are connected and some topics are not in my case I want to use connected so even I used connected or I can use some optimal optimal that means a shortcut for the value so base I want uh, to base on this expression me that means any DD speed link coming from this uh, template dot connect uh, dot connection status yeah so let me just make sure about the name it's connection status let me make it here me dot connection state status to make sure about the typo control x okay so me dot connection status if it's different than connected so even you can create connected the, the, the string or different than the optimal too. The same. Once it's not connected, I have to try to reconnect, but I have to re try to reconnect every what? Every several seconds. So while this expression is true, this is why this trigger it will be while true. Remember while true, while false, on true, on false, etc. No, in this case, while true. That means every time this one you find it is true, try to reconnect, which is me dot. Recon, reconnect equal equal or equal true okay equal equal is for uh, for uh, comparison is for expression so you can put it in expression put in expression but equal that means you're giving an order so in this case i'm trying to reconnect on every scan period this will generate a little bit of traffic maybe maybe i'm not very uh, needy to uh, to generate this one so i can make it like try to reconnect every 10 seconds so i can change it the trigger period remember the table here where i have to understand that trigger uh, table with the scan period in my case now i will leave it as default that try to reconnect it every time or let's make it 5 seconds so uh, maybe it's good 
or you can make it one minutes or one hour, so minutes and hour. And here, you, here is the basic where you can uh, work on uh, some, uh, uh, you can con control your, your, uh, your scripting and you can design and uh, do the scripting in from here. You can run the script asynchronously, you can report the alarms, you can historize uh, the state of your script, it's all from here. Remember every time to just lock down everything to force the inheriting to the children, to inherit the children. So let's save it. And this is what I need. We do reconnect, it's different than zero. That's it. Okay, save and close. And okay. Let's open the instance from runtime to, uh, to see what's happening in here. From script in runtime, it's not up. Yes, it's down. Down is what are the scripts that are inherited. So the scripts are inherited. You can find it down. And here, if you didn't lock from up, you can change it actually, but because I, 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 I lock it, and this is why I cannot change the script. We always recommend to do this because if not, you will lose your change. Where did you change the script? It will be a little bit difficult to, in case you have a big uh, object. So let's uh, close and right click, deploy everything. Ah, before that, let's try the scenario when I deactivate my server and right click activate again now if you rem uh, remember the dd suite link now it's disconnected that means it will never be disconnected again unless i connect it manually so let's go for true and apply it's connected now because of the script right click deploy okay That's it. Okay, so I'll just give it a little bit of time today to take. It's connected. Now we can try the following. Right click, deactivate, and activate. Connected automatically. It's working fine. This is for the scripting. Yeah, for sure the script can be more or less complicated we always recommend to make your script as simple as it can be the next uh, part is to work on uh, in graphic i have this type of uh, omi application it's a simple uh, uh, alarm client alarm application and i can control it from here i can change the star the, the time start and end okay so you can you can do this with simple with simple scripts from uh, the symbol. This symbol is called selector. I will go for this selector and show you how to make uh, some script for the graphics. So let's open uh, graphic toolbox. So my selector is here. This is my selector, my graphic. And there is, as I told you, there is two different types of script for the graphics. So the first, uh, first one is related to the graphic itself. So this is right click on the canvas. You can find it in here. So predefined script, this is by default. What do you want to do? On show, so that means once the graphic is showing, or on hide once the graphic is hidden, or while it's showing. While it's showing, you can use, so for every same while trigger uh, thing while uh, with every here every milli every 1000 millisecond that means every second you can do the script so me dot whatever uh, value uh, value equal equal uh, equal one for example or while showing and you can generate your own scripts many many scripts you want so let's say script one one and based on an expression if me dot uh, connection status status different or whatever different than two uh you know here you can do while true uh while false on true on false or based on data change okay same same mentality this is the first script uh, methods in the application and the second uh, script method in my application is related to some tools so for example this push button 
once I click on it. In my case, it's this push button is, um, is a push button animation. So I can make a push button animation or show, uh, show symbol animation. When I click on it, it will show a symbol. What if I have a more complicated uh, application and it needs different or several uh, function to be to be work at the same time. In this case, let me remove it because I cannot have different uh, in interaction application at the same time. And here I have action scripts. In the action script, if I click on this push button or any uh, tools, I can generate a script. That's mean make me dot uh, value equal uh, five. If I click and uh, show graphic, show content, so let's say show graphic. And by the way, you can have some shortcut in here. So here in show graphic, what is the show graphic? You can go for graphic client. It will give you the initial, okay, I need a show graphic animation or show content animation. It will give you the initial uh, part and you can change it from here. Yeah, and what is the trigger type? All it's looked here. So do you want a key equivalent? That's mean control and another key. Yes, you can, uh, or if you click, what type of click? On left click, down, up, while it's down. So you have a while as well. While it's down, do this, while it's not, okay. You can have many different trigger types. Okay, so let me cancel it. This is regarding the graphics. And not last but not least, the OMI, let me close it. In OMI, I already have uh, this, uh, the same application that is already uh, shown in here. How, how this one is working, actually, once I'm, I'm changing, let me hear, once I'm changing any of these value, I'm linked to a namespace and using some methods of the alarm client control. Just let's remove it. So, yep, let's go to the OMI. And here, this is the selector. And this is here, the alarm uh, the alarm alarm application so alarm application we name it alarm control one and from the selector let me open the selector again to see what are the attributes i'm uh, i'm changing for example i'm changing here this is a normal text once i'm i'm changing this text i'm actually changing something called start so it's a user input named start. This start is in the custom property I already added. It's my view app dot AA. So this is a namespace dot start time. So I'm con connecting to this attribute, start time. So what is the AA dot start time? Let me close, cancel. It's actually a namespace that I already generated for my OMI. So in namespace, it will be a view app namespace. This is the AA, remember? So what is the namespace here? Once I open an application, I have a start and get start, okay. Start time, this is, it's a string. So I'm changing this attribute from the namespace based on the time there. Why I'm doing all of this? I'm preparing an attribute to use it actually in my uh, in my OMI. So going for OMI, remember here, this is a new tab in 2020, this is the script. Once I'm changing the, uh, uh, the tab, I'm actually changing something in here. In OMI, by default, I have on show. So on show, when I'm showing this layout, I can generate a script. While it's showing with a period, I can generate a script. And on hide, I can generate another script. The script that uh, related to the uh, start, type is actually here my content dot this is so this is my content the content of omi dot alarm client control this is the one the alarm client control dot what dot alarm client control dot time selector start time and end time time selector is actually an attribute it's a method uh, like a function just related to the alarm client control. The alarm client control, you can find this link in the same uh, place where you can find the script.pdf. So what I'm doing, I'm changing me.view uh, AA is the start and the end type from the selector. Once I'm changing there, and based on what? Based on the request. The request is coming from the OK. Once I'm clicking on OK, so the data is changed, 
I'm putting all of these and then I'm refreshing my application. Just for, like any, any other language, uh, a quick script.net and a scripting, like any language, link any programming language, uh, it's needed practice. Uh, with a practice, you'll be more and more expertise with it. So once you did this, this is where and how I'm, I'm controlling my alarm client control with my start and end. And this is how we already uh, already uh, close it uh, we, uh, uh, from the object, graphic, and the application part. And that's it for the, the scripting. Yeah, for sure, again, you need more about it. The best way to understand the script or to know all the function, no one memorize all the function, the best way is always put the scripting guide next to you. And you can find a lot of uh, other libraries in the uh, support website, the knowledge support website of Aveva. I, uh, I recommend you to uh, go there and uh, you have to have uh, your, your account already and to uh, look at any scripting guide. By the way, you can generate your own library as well. If you are very good in, in, um, in development, you have the Orchestra uh, toolkit when you can generate your own library. It's a .NET, normal .NET under Visual, uh, Visual Studio uh, application. So you can generate your own library and make you customize your own library. And that's it for today. If there is any question, please let me know. Yes, uh, Nader? Thank you, Monzer. Thank you so much for the session. Uh, so while, just while waiting the audience question, let me clarify one point with you. So uh, the cases when we use the script and the scripting is not limited to specific cases, right? It's based on the situation or project requirements. Am I right? Ah, uh, Yes, uh, th there is many, many. It's, it's an open topic. Every mm -hmm. object, uh, every project has its own scripting. So it's okay. not specific. The, the one that I show you today is actually the most common one because the DD Suite link is only manually can connect, or you can you have to connect it with the with the graphic. You can do it uh, dynamically with the way that I show you. This is maybe the only one that is common for everyone. You can you can use script for uh, addressing, but we don't recommend it. We can uh, you can use a script in any situation once you don't have. Uh, the functionality ex built in in your application, you can use your script. Wonderful. Okay, let's just give one minute for the audience to ask if they have any question. Please, John, ladies and gentlemen, if any questions, make sure you're, you'll be typing it in the questions area, and uh, we are we will be answering it now. Otherwise, you can send it uh, to us by email and will be uh, reply as soon as possible. Uh, the first question. Uh, in the example, you change the animation to a script. Is it a rec recommendation? Monzer, uh, I don't know this question. Can you help with this? Uh, yes, uh, I change. Yes, okay. Let me go back to my application to make sure that I'm um, uh, the one here. It's um, uh, You're talking about the selector, right? When I yes, went you're here, changing I yeah. Yes, I'm changing the push button to a script. Exactly. Yes. Now, if uh, we, if, if any, as I said, any uh, function, you find it built in, use the built-in functionality, don't use the script. More script, more, uh, more complicated your, uh, your uh, uh, system and application will be, and that will, uh, that will make it heavy. So the push button is a built-in animation. If you have only to change a value, toggle it from true to false, or make it a set, this is the only function you need to make. No, use the push button or use the show symbol. There is here show symbol. In case you want to show, simply showing a symbol is in a specific uh, window. But in case you have a complicated application, that's mean I want to change three values at the same time and showing uh, 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 another symbol. And uh, at the same time, I want to execute um, uh, some types of functions, yes, in this case, uh, from one push button, in this case, I remove the animation and make an action script. So use action script just in case you have a complicated, um, uh, what we call it, a complicated action you want to make that is not covered with a simple animation. In case, again, in case you have a built-in functionality 
uh, like for example, before 2014 R2, uh, the addressing was made by even by scripts or manually. Uh, starting 2014 R2, now we have auto bounding. So all the scripts must be changed to auto bounding. Don't use the scripts for this if you have it a built in application. I think this is the question, right? Okay, great, great, Moser. Uh, the second question, why does on true did not execute in fourth scan period in previous example? I, okay. I'm not on sure which example, example they are referring. On true, maybe they are referring to the table. Ah, okay, okay. So why on true is not executed in the, what example? Uh, yeah, why does on true did not execute in fourth scan period? In the previous example. Yes. If you mean in here or in, on true in here. So because it's once it's on true, it was false, now it's true, so it will be executed only once. Now, if you are asking here in this script, why the on true it didn't execute here, even if I have a false, because this false part, as I said, it's already dropped. Now, let me explain again what's on true, how it will execute. On true will exec execute only if it was false on the previous scan period and it's becoming true. So here it was true and it's still true. So it's not on true, it's while true. So on true will not execute it here. In this example down, yes, it's becoming false. So theoretically on true must be executed here. But as I said, this is a lost data because the, the app engine will scan every 10 seconds, not continuously all the 10 seconds. Every 10, scan, 10 seconds, I have one scan. That I that means I already scanned here, it was true. I scanned here, it's still true. This, which is in between, is already lost. And this is why I really recommend you, once you are building your app engine, pay attention of many things that we already talked in the previous video about best practice and put in your consideration the while true, on true, and the trigger uh, scripting versus the scan period. I hope this has covered the question. Yes, and uh, this question was asked by, was raised by Sandeep. In case it's not cleared, please you can just uh, raise another question or let us know. So uh, question number three, um, what about InTouch script? Are, are OMI script application for InTouch? Applicable, sorry, for InTouch? They're asking if the OMI scripts is applicable for InTouch or no. Are OMI and in applicable for InTouch? No, they are not. Uh, OMI is for OMI. So OMI script will be only applicable for the open application that I'm using in here. So it's only for OMI. What about the, uh, the, the InTouch application? Okay, the InTouch have different scripting methods. Let's let's open the an application. I have an application already. Oops, I have to close this one. Let me open my application. The first, the language is different. The graphics will be applicable. The script of the graphics, once I uh, get a, script, uh, a graphic from uh, my Galaxy to InTouch, the script inside my graphic will be applicable. It can be overwritten by InTouch. This is one. The script of the object, for sure the object will run and the InTouch will see the script. But the application script, OMI, is different than InTouch, so InTouch has its own script. The language is different at the same. It's not quickscript.net. First, it's quickscript. Let me show you what are the scripts. I have a script based on a window. Let me add a new window. So script for Windows. You must specify a name. So test, okay. Test. So here I have script. Uh, Regarding um, um, some windows, I can show it. Oh, I can show it from here. Special, go for config, configure, or where is it? Script, 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 script. There is it. I have application script. So application script. It's based on the application is, itself. Once I start up in touch while it's running and on shutdown for in touch application. This is one. This is application script. I have. Uh, let's go back to script. I have Windows script, so the windows that I open it here while showing on show and on high, similar of OMI, but for in touch. And let me go uh, go for a special here. I have scripts for key script. Key script is simply if I click 
on control plus, for example, Q, do a script, so control Q, it will generate another script. Quiz validate with everything in here, let's look uh, uh, very easy to use. And uh, let's go again for scripts to show you condition scripts. So in case I have a tag or I want to reach a condition in here, I put the condition, the expression is here. This is the same expression uh, mentality. So I have as well on false, while false, on true, while true. Okay. I have uh, other than the expression, I have the data. Where is it? Data. Data change script. Same for the condition, but based on data change. In, in my application server, data change and condition are, are together. The data change, while true, on true are all together. And last but not least, if I have a complicated function, I can make it as a quick script. So I can, I can put some arguments like get uh, a number and I put some argument between those uh, uh, for this uh, function. I generate my own, uh, my own function. So once I click on this function, I can generate a long script for a, a small function. So it's make it like um, like a fast path. This is one. And two, regarding other action script, remember the push button script. I can have make a push button script here. Action, this is the action script on based on right click, left click, etc. I can generate another script. But this is, as I said, it's quick script related to in touch. You can find more about it when you go for the documentation. And here you have in touch scripting, something here in touch HMI uh, scripting and logics. This is the one. This is the document that you need to look at for in touch. Yep. Okay. Any, okay. any other question? It seems no more questions for today. So I want to thank you, Monzer, for the session. And, to th and I want to thank everyone for attending and for the questions you have raised today. You will be receiving the webinar recorded as usual, and you can share it with your team. So we will meet you next week with a new webinar. Until that time, stay safe and a nice weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Nadir. Thank you, everyone.